What's up guys? Sorry for the noise. We've got a chiller over there still running. What we've got today is a train RTAC chiller with a screw compressor. We're doing a little leak repair. We know for a fact we've got a really bad leak right down there. Leaking from that valve over there. Um, just got done recovering all the refrigerant. Each circuit holds 230 pounds of R134A. Um, we had to pull all the gas. If you're wondering why we didn't use some sort of pump down method or isolation method, we tried and the valves weren't holding. So we had to wind up taking all the gas out. Uh, recovered about 190 pounds out of the 230. While I was recovering, I tried to stay busy and I scanned everything that I could find on this circuit, short of prying up all the insulation with my electronic leak detector, and I did not find any other leaks at this time. So we're gonna make the repair, and probably what I'm going to do is leave it on a nitrogen holding charge over the weekend. Today is Friday, and I might not have time to pull a good enough vacuum by the end of the day anyway. I'll come back Monday and check and see what the pressure is on the nitrogen holding charge and then we'll kind of go from there so what I plan on doing is and again I don't know why engineers don't do this if you hear that hissing I'm ble bleeding out the uh, remaining fumes of the refrigerant little side note I might mention to y'all always when recovering from a chilled water system you have to make sure that the chilled water pump is running that pump over there, that gold balder motor. This chiller configuration, the pump is set to only run when the chiller itself is in auto mode. I've got the chiller in stop right now, so I switched the pump to hand to make sure that we've got water moving. If you're not moving water through the barrel while you're recovering, there's a great risk and chance of freezing and rupturing the tubes, which could be a catastrophic event for you and your company that you want to avoid at all costs. So always make sure you've got the pump running. Now what I plan on doing is I'm gonna unsweat that valve right there. And I'm gonna put a piece of 3 8 bend it around, probably put a 3 8 by 3 8 refrigeration ball valve right there. We're gonna eliminate this sight glass altogether. I talked to the customer, I said, hey, I can sweat in another sight glass. He said he doesn't want a sight glass at all. So I'm gonna catch it about right here, cut it about right here, excuse me, raise in 3 8 and put another refrigeration ball valve somewhere right here. The reason I'm doing this, and you would think they would have this from factory, I'm gonna put refrigeration ball valves there with taps. So if we need to isolate the strainer right back here, we can do that without having to go through a recovery or pump down method. It'd be as simple as staging down this compressor, making sure it's off, closing the refrigeration ball valve, drawing out whatever is in this line, and then checking the strainer, pulling a vacuum on that section between here and there. I went ahead and closed off this line right here just to prevent any possible uh, oil leakage or try to minimize, minimize it if possible. It's um, almost a guarantee you're going to lose some oil if you unhook this line or cut it here. It's just inevitable. There's no way to block it off right here. So I will try to get some footage of the braze work and uh, keep you all updated as I go. Alright, so as you can see we got everything lined up. Uh, simple enough. I just hand bent it. It's only 3 8 so No, it's not perfect like if I had to use a bender, but it'll pass I'm Just gonna couple it right there Refrigeration ball valve right there always make sure you take the cap off and remove the Schrader core so you don't burn it up Cut out that flare and sight glass like I said I told him I could have put another sight glass in he swore that he didn't want it done so Coupled it right there, another refrigeration ball valve right there. Got all our uh, connections nice and sanded with sandpaper, shiny clean. Wiped off any residue with a rag. 
I'm gonna set up the torches and try to get y'all some footage. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna start on this side over here and we're gonna flow just the slightest bit of nitrogen. I don't wanna pressurize it too hard and you know, risk moving the oil around or that can cause me problems. So I'm gonna set up here, flow, and then um, raise this side and then I'll switch over, purge from there and uh, braze this one in right here. Uh, we're gonna make sure we wet some rags, wrap around these valve bodies so they don't overheat. And uh, I'm also going to change out the filter dryer core and the oil filter. This is a school district, so it's the middle of summer. They're down right now. Uh, train RTAC manual states that you don't really need to change the oil filter unless it's causing problems. Uh, these chillers are really old. The guy says it's never been changed. He has one on site. He wants me to change it anyway. Uh, little side note. Find you the part number. This is the part number for the oil filter, an FLR03434. It does not come with a gasket or an O-ring. You will have to order that separately from train. There's a gasket right there on the plate and an O-ring inside. So I don't have it with me. The train supply in my area has some in stock. So before I go do the dryer core and change the oil filter, I'm gonna do my brazes here leave the existing dryer core in there because I don't want to open up my new one and uh, expose it to atmosphere. I'll go pick that up from train, come back, do the oil filter, then put the dryer core in, and then we'll go from there. Okay guys, I apologize for the lack of brazing footage. Uh, when I was up under here, I knocked the camera over, so I lost that, and then when I got over to that valve over there, it totally just slipped my mind to restart the camera. But yeah, you can tell we just coupled right there, braced in the isolation valve, put a block of wood and some supports underneath it so it didn't sag when the copper heated it up. Same thing here. Uh, lack of access made it kind of tricky. Had to clear all that stuff out of the way. It's saturated with oil and refrigerant, so it was flammable. Uh, had to reach my torch in here from this side underneath, I have my hand over here, so. You know how it goes, when you're in the classroom brazing on a table, anyone can make a perfect braze. It's when you get out in the field and you gotta lay on your stomach or crouch down on your ass and you got stuff overhead is where the real test comes in. But I've given this stuff time to cool, let it cool with a wet rag. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in, uh, put the Schrader cores back in using Nylog Blue. While I've got the system empty, I'm gonna go ahead and change out pretty much all the Schrader cores with new Schrader cores and Nylog Blue. Um, no reason not to when you've got the system pulled. So those things wear out over time, as we all know. Uh, I'm gonna get the Schraders in there, finish up and do that, and then I will head to Train Supply to pick up the oil filter O-ring and oil filter gasket. When I get back, I'll change the dryer core and the oil filter. And see y'all in a little bit. All right, got back from the supply house. Got my gaskets. So, close this oil line off. It's gonna prevent anything flowing back through. Um, you're gonna have to put a hose right here and just kind of bleed out the oil that's in there. I had a bucket ready, but this is pretty much all that came out from that hose. So not much, we've really minimized it. These bolts right here are a three quarter, I believe. Yeah, three quarter. take this very bottom bolt out you're gonna need an allen key and that is a 316 size so you're gonna have to remove that allen key before you can take that bottom bolt out let's get it opened up and see what it looks like There's a 
remainder of it. And that, my friends, is why we always keep a Home Depot bucket at the ready. water bottle, but better safe than sorry. I don't know if you can see this. That's the O-ring that you'll have to order. Nine times out of ten, the O-ring is still going to be okay. I went ahead and ordered one either way, just to be safe. Now that we got that Allen key pulled, we can go ahead and take these bolts out. Put a little muscle in it. Don't break loose. Feel bad if you need to use a cheater bar. Now that we got them broken loose, they're pretty much finger tight. Get back them out with my fingers. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video, take the cap off, and show you what it looks like. All right, after you get the bolts pulled out, they're pretty long. You're going to take the faceplate off, and it's going to be stuck on there, so you may need to get a real thin flathead screwdriver, hit it with a hammer, kind of pry it loose a little bit at a time. Just like that right there. And that, guys, is why you have to have the gasket whenever you come back. You may be able to get by without the O-ring. The gasket, though, as soon as that plate comes off, it is going to shred and be absolutely worthless. When you reapply the new gasket, you're going to want to make sure this is totally clean. None of the remaining or the previously existing gasket on there. So get sandpaper, a wire brush, whatever you may need. Scrape it off with a knife and make sure it's shiny before you reapply the gasket. Okay guys, got the old gasket pulled out. New gasket set in place. Sorry, not the gasket, the oil filter. Uh, remember when you're setting an oil filter, internal on this type of oil filter, there's an O-ring right inside here. So when you put your new oil filter in, you're gonna wanna use some of that uh, oil that's laying in the bottom of this right here, and you're gonna wanna lubricate the inside of this O-ring real good and this face plate. Okay, so, so you ensure a good seal. Just gonna slide it in. There's little feet right here that'll kind of guide it. It'll basically push into an opening 
you'll feel a little resistance. Don't freak out. Just give it a hard shove and it'll snap in place and seat properly. You can tell that we got all the gasket off and all I did pretty much was scrape it with a flathead screwdriver and then take a piece of sandpaper and uh, file off the rest. Same thing with this plate right here. We're gonna go back with the gasket cover. You can use the refrigeration oil on the gasket kind of as a lubricant, but I like to use personally Nylog Blue. I've had great success with this stuff. It won't contaminate the system, compatible with all refrigerants. This is a really great project, uh, product for anything HVACR related. So I'm gonna apply a little right here, apply a little to the gasket, slap it on, and then apply it to the back side of the gasket, put the face plate back on, and then we'll get the bolts back in. When you're putting the face plate back on, this is kind of how I like to do it. I put Nylog, like I said, right here. I put it on this side of the gasket and it'll kind of stick to itself, line your holes up. And then what you're going to want to do is slide your bolts through the end cap. Go ahead and push them through and that'll hold your gasket in place so it's not sliding around while you're just trying to mount the end cap, you know, and, it's, and you're losing the form of it. So just push them in like that. Easy does it. Slam it shut. There you go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of make these finger tight for the most part. Get them all to where they're about equal. Remember, whenever you're tightening bolts or breaking them loose for that matter, you want to go opposite for each bolt you do. So I just, I'm going to tighten this one with my ratchet and then I'll tighten this one on the other side. Then when I go to tighten my, uh, tighten another one with the ratchet, I'll tighten this one and then I'll tighten this one. If I tighten this one, I'll tighten this one right here. That's gonna ensure that the face plate mounts evenly across the surface. Here's the part numbers for the gasket for the FLR03434 oil filter. You're gonna need gasket number GKT03852. And you're also going to need O-ring part number RNG1697. It's just a little O-ring like that goes on that Allen fitting that we showed you earlier. So I'm going to change that out. I've got those all snug. I'm going to put that back in. And that'll probably be a wrap for today. I'm running out of time. Like I said, it's not critical they get this back up and running. This is for a school district, so they're closed for the summer right now. Uh, I'm not going to change the dryer core today. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a nitrogen holding charge on the system. Come back Monday morning verify that my nitrogen pressure is holding then I'll purge the nitrogen and replace the dryer core after that we'll make sure every valve is open um, including that one right there and pull a deep vacuum put my micron gauge somewhere on the system and then we'll re um, recharge with what we recovered which is about 190 pounds and top it off with the Virgin R134A. So guys, I appreciate y'all watching. Um, like, comment, subscribe. If you find this video helpful, I appreciate it. I've been where you guys are at before. Hopefully this helps somebody that may encounter an issue or gives you a little bit of knowledge about how the train RTAC system operates. Peace.